guys, welcome back. Because you guys can't come to the aquarium, we are bringing the aquarium to you. Now last week we talked with Lucas about the plants and the animals that depend on them. Today we're talking with one of our animal caretakers, Leslie. Leslie, can you introduce yourself and the team you're on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Leslie. I am an endotherms keeper. Endotherms here at the aquarium is just a fancy word for birds and mammals, the warm-blooded creatures. Uh, so I specifically work in the Jurena South America Hall, taking care of all the birds and mammals that live in here. So wait a minute, when you say birds and mammals, does that include sloths? It sure does. I love those furry sloths. Sloths are amazing. And I actually want to talk a little bit about the sloths because we talked about the food that they eat last week. Can you tell us a little bit of what it's like to care for and feed a sloth? Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, two sloths, one male, one female. And uh, honestly, taking care of them and their exhibit takes up my entire work day. Uh, everything from cleaning up poop, which is pretty obvious. A poopy time, would you uh, say? Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> to prepping their diet, uh, making sure it's measured out and washed, uh, and then everything from breaking and cleaning and even uh, training the sloth. So wait, you can train a sloth? You can train any animal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Uh, here at the aquarium, we use offering conditioning. Offering conditioning means that the animal makes a choice uh, to do a behavior, and then that behavior is rewarded. Uh, we choose to only reward behaviors uh, using positive reinforcement. So essentially, what you're saying is when he does something that you ask him to, like move over to see you, uh, you would then reward him. Exactly, exactly. All right, I'm trapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is actually incredibly useful for our sloths because it means that they can participate in their own health care. When the vet comes, they don't have to get put under anesthesia every time because they can do things that make it so they are less stressed and the vet can still do what they need to. Uh, so doing this training really allows us to help bring that stress level down for the animal and so that way they can remain calm and participate in their health care. That's amazing. What's something that we can do, so me and Scarlett, and then all you guys out there, what can we do to help sloths in the wild? Great question. Uh, one of the biggest things we can focus on is making sure that the wood that we use and things coming from the rainforest is being harvested sustainably. We want to make sure we're not taking away too much from the animals. We want to make sure we're doing it within guidelines to make sure that the animals still have a happy home in the wild. The Rainforest Alliance is a great institution that makes sure that things coming out of the rainforest are being sustainably harvested or uh, there are other options of things that would come from the rainforest that can be produced in other ways. Uh, that Rainforest Alliance program is awesome to make sure that you can do your part to help our sloth friends. So it would seem that if we can keep the trees healthy, we can keep the sloths healthy. Thank you so much, Leslie, for taking the time to share about your life with the sloths. We're actually going to head on upstairs, so we will see you around. Have fun exploring! Thank you guys so much. We've come to the end of this adventure, and we learned so much today about how sloth training helps the sloths have the best possible health care. Looks like Scarlett knows where we're going next, but it sure is hot here. Let's go with Scarlett to cool down. Since you guys can't come to the aquarium, we're bringing the aquarium to you. See y'all next time.